Hello, welcome to a new YouTube video. I'm so excited that you're here. My name's Carly. I'm a sewist and a maker here on YouTube and let's get straight into the video. Today we are talking about one of my favorite things of all time, patchworking. Patchworking is such an amazing technique because you can use your scrap fabric, you can make a new fabrication, you can play with colors, patterns, textures, formation. Getting to delve into making your own fabrication is just a very exciting thing. It opens up a whole new world of possibilities for what you can make. I also love it because I can go to a thrift store and I can find pieces of fabric that are really small but I love them and I still know that I can get a lot of life out of these textiles because I can combine them with other fabrics that I have in my stash already. Also, patchworking is just incredibly joyous and fun and exciting. Like the fact that I can incorporate this many of my favorite fabrics in one piece is just very lovely. You can see I'm excited about patchworking, so hopefully by the end of this video you will be excited too. I'm going to break down how I patchwork in a very simple way and hopefully you enjoy exploring this new skill with me. Speaking of learning new skills, I have a very exciting announcement that this video today is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community and they have a huge range of classes that cover topics like illustration, graphic design, and photography. But as a sewing girlie, I was very excited to find out that they have a lot of classes on topics such as sewing, hand stitching, pattern drafting, and fashion designing. There's a class on pattern drafting in Adobe Illustrator, a hand sewing class by Bernadette Banner that I have my heart set on doing, and a class on Boris stitching basics. As an artist that works predominantly with patchwork textiles, I wanted to learn about Boris stitching for a while. It's a very beautiful art and thanks to this class I've been able to learn some new stitching techniques and put them in my patchworked pocket for the future. I can't wait to start applying these techniques in my work in the future and I feel very inspired about what I've learned in this class. Whether you want to learn some new hand stitches like me or take a class on crochet or maybe something like creative writing or how to start your own creative side hustle, Skillshare has a wealth of knowledge for you to explore. If this is something that interests you, Skillshare have an offer for you. The first 500 people to click the link in the description will receive one month free of Skillshare. So get on that, mates, if you are keen. One month free of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I am so honored. Now, it's patchwork time. There's basically countless ways to patchwork, but today I'm just going to show you some really simple ones so that you can learn the technique and then you can go crazy with it. Some of the best patchworkers in the world are quilters. So if you get really into this craft, go check out the way that people make quilts. Their patchworking skills are unparalleled. But for me, as I'm making fabrication for my dresses and shirts and such, I keep it pretty simple. I'm talking rectangles and squares, baby. To patchwork, I recommend having a variety of scrap fabrics on hand, any shape, any size. But one thing I recommend is that your fabric be a similar makeup to one another. To get started, I recommend tipping out a big bunch of fabric scraps if you have some, giving them a good iron, and just picking out all the ones that make you happy and not overthinking it too much. I always find my best patchworks are when I don't overthink it. Then today I used a 12 by 12 centimeter square template and cut all of my fabric out around that square. You don't have to do the size, you don't have to do the shape, but it is one of the easier beginner patchwork templates. So I cut out nine squares out of this template and I arranged them in a formation that I found very enjoyable. And then I got to sewing it together in rows. So I put the fabric squares right sides together and sewed them down at about a half inch seam allowance. Once I had sewn those two squares together, I was able to sew the third square on right sides together as well. One of the questions I get most about patchworking is how do I finish the seams? What's going on on the wrong side of the fabric? And really, I have three solutions for finishing your raw edges of patchwork. The first option is to leave your edges raw, press them out so the seam goes on either side, and line your work. I mean, there's not really much to show you there. I literally just pressed it out and you would just line it. 
that one's easy. <laughs> I believe this is the technique that quilters use. It means that your seams will not be very bulky, but also you will have to line your work, which is sometimes a little bit of a pain. The second option is my favorite and it's simply overlocking or zigzag stitching the raw edge. This is timey. You have to zigzag stitch every single raw edge, but it means that you don't necessarily have to line your work. And it is how I finish my patchwork fabrication for all of my dresses, shirts, and garments that I make for my small business. I know it's timey, but I do overlock every single raw edge of my patchwork one by one. Then I press them nice and flat with my iron. And if I'm feeling fancy, I will do a top stitch. Top stitching is optional, but it does help your overlocked seams to all lay in the same direction, which I think looks beautiful. Cause sometimes when you patchwork, the seam will get pulled like this, and I hate it. I want it to sit flat like this. It's beautiful. The last option I have rarely used, but it does serve a function, and it is French seaming your seams. A French seam is a technique in which you sew the fabric wrong sides together, press that seam, and then you stitch one more time so that the seam is actually enclosed in the fabric. And I would recommend using this technique if you're working with sheer fabric or fabric where both sides of the garment will be seen. For example, a curtain. This is the most time extensive technique, but sometimes you'll need to French seam and that's totally fine. So now that you know how to finish your seam, you basically just need to pick your fighter, whether you're going to zigzag or overlock or French seam, or whether you're just going to press your seam out and line your work. Once you pick your fighter, you can just start building your textile, which is the most fun part. Today I'm going to work with the overlocking finish because that is what I usually do and it's what I would recommend for most generic projects. To build your fabrication, you basically just have to construct a bunch of rows that you are going to then sew together. So here I am just constructing my second and third row, just doing exactly what I did before, sewing at the half inch seam allowance right sides together, and then overlocking my raw edges, every single one of them, I promise it will be worth it, giving them a nice iron and then top stitching those seams. If you're working with even squares, when you attach your rows together, you might want to pin them together just so that you can line up your seams. But if you're not working with even squares and it's just random patchwork, you could just sew it together haphazardly without pins, I reckon. Maybe that's why I like patchwork. Don't necessarily need a pin if you're going crazy with it. And you know I'm going crazy with it. For this 9x9 nine nine square patchwork, all I had to do was construct my three rows together, so I pinned them together at the seams, trying my very, very best to align those seams to one another. And then all you have to do is just sew right sides together along those lines, just like we did before. Now really, you'd probably be working with a much bigger textile if you were making it for a dress or quilt or something, but this is just to show you the process, I guess. And just as I did earlier, I'm going to overlock these raw edges and top stitch them and then it will be done. Yay, we did it. <laughs> That is the absolute fundamentals of patchworking. I recommend starting with squares if you are a first time patchworker because they're very easy and you'll get excited when you get this back very neat. Like it's just one of those pure delights in life. Once you have the fundamentals down and you can make patchwork squares like this, basically you just need to build your textile until it's big enough to do whatever you want to do. Whether you're making a top or pants or a quilt, whatever it is, you just keep working on it. Anyway, that's really simple. So let me show you a few other ways that I like to patchwork that are a little bit more unconventional. Hey, I actually think unconventional was a crazy word to use because what we're literally doing is not using squares, but rectangles and just literally irregular sizes. So basically you can just cut out a bunch of square rectangle shapes 
and sew them together, right sides together. That's all we're doing. And then I just snip off the excess because we haven't cut things to equal sizes. They're not going to all fit together. You basically just have to wing it and you sew and you trim and you sew and you trim and you just keep building your textile using that method. Also, you must, you must press your seams in between and I would recommend overlocking them too. This was me hurriedly showing you the process, but I did not do any finishing of the seams. And yes, I grimace, I grimace that this is what I did and I am apologizing as well. If you're doing this freestyle square rectangular patchwork, it's pretty critical that you do finish your seams and iron in between every single patchwork. I didn't do it just then because I wanted to show it to you really quickly, but make sure you do because it's going to make it so much better. This is a great technique if you don't want to cut out even sizes of fabric or you have a lot of scraps that are a lot of different sizes. You can use really small pieces or larger pieces and incorporate them all into one fabrication. If I work with this technique, I will usually work in panels. So I'll build up my fabrication to a meter, maybe a meter and a half, and I will just do lots of one and a half meter panels and then sew them together. It still looks exactly like this, but in my brain it's a lot easier to construct. I actually use that construction method for my Joe March dress tutorial. So if you're interested in that, you might be able to see in that dress how the patchwork is all in panels. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. Build up the fabric however you please. I just like working in columns. Obviously there are so many more ways that you can patchwork, but I'm gonna show you one last one and it's just crazy patchworking. I believe it's called crumb quilting. Correct me if I'm wrong. Basically we're just gonna attach whatever we want to whatever we want and call it a textile. Let me show you. I think for this one, it's good to have smaller sized scraps and irregular sized scraps. I'm gonna work my overlocker for this. In theory, you would actually do a straight stitch to secure every single one of these seams. But in practice today, I'm just gonna overlock it so that I can show you because it does make it very timey. <laughs> but pretend I'm straight stitching like a good sewist. This patchwork technique is really similar to the last one I showed you, except it's just a little bit more irregular. The scrap shapes do not have to be all clean and rectangular before you go. You really can just throw them together, right sides together, and snip off any excess that you like. And what I like to do as well is I'll put some in a rectangular position and then I'll put my next piece of scraps on a diagonal like in this clip here. And doing that in a little bit of a playful way just creates these interesting and different shapes in your patchworking. It's very exciting. Please, if you want to do this, I do recommend doing the straight stitch on the left side of your overlocking stitch and then pressing in between every seam. I didn't do it for this. I just wanted to show you as quickly as I could apparently, but it will make everything so much nicer and neater. But yeah, you can see how there's a little bit more intrigue and interest in this piece because of the irregular shapes. You're gonna have to forgive me for the horrendous way in which I just composed this piece. You would want to press in between your seams and you would want to do your stitch with your regular straight stitch as well. But you get the picture. This crumb quilting technique is so fun because it allows you to use tiny pieces of fabric and also you can kind of cut across your fabric in, in crazy ways and, and make interesting shapes that aren't just rectangles or squares. I love this. I think it's really fun and exciting to do. My cautionary warning is that if you do cut into a seam, you must make sure that you straight stitch and back stitch where you made that cut because seams will love to unravel if you give them the chance. And I have learned this the hard way with my patchworking journey. This goes the same if you make a big patchwork textile and then you put your pattern on top of that textile and cut your pattern out, you must make sure that your seams are still intact because if you've cut through any back stitching, they're just gonna unravel a little bit. And sometimes you can get far through the construction process when you realize something has unraveled and it's just split in the seam. And it hurts so bad. It hurts. So just make sure your seams are super, super secure. 
Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this little dive into patchworking. There is something so rewarding about getting to build your own textile, especially if it's from scraps. For me personally, I just feel immense satisfaction that those pieces of fabric aren't going into landfill and they've become something new and magical. I know a lot of you feel the same way and that's why you're here and I see you and I think that you are amazing. Let's keep patchworking and spreading the joy. If you have any questions from this tutorial, leave them in the comments below and I will get to them as best as I can. That is all for today's video. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. If you liked the video, give it a like or if you want more, hit the subscribe button. Why don't you? And as always, let me know what projects you're working on this week in the comment section below. I love hearing what you're all up to. Good luck with all of your creative projects. I hope you have an amazing week and I will see you in the next video.